So the uh, next speaker, uh, the last talk of the session will be uh, Grant Passmore and he'll uh, tell us about uh, Amandra. Well, thank you very much, Andrew and organizers and everyone. Uh, as I think uh, it was Jeff who mentioned he was in one of the COVID capitals of the USA in Florida. And I think I may be in the other one, which is Texas. So hello from Austin and uh, Certainly, I think we all wish we were in Paris together, but if I'm stuck at home, I'm glad I'm stuck at home with all of you. Um, so I wanna tell you about uh, a system that we've been building for the past almost six years now uh, called Imandra. And we actually founded a, a company uh, and raised capital and you know went out uh, specifically to build uh, our dream system for the kind of uh, verification that we wanted to do. And, uh, now I will I will tell you all about it. So this is joint work with um, just a really uh, incredible team. I feel so lucky uh, to be working with on the, the core of our system. So Simone Cruance, who many of you will know very well uh, and is I'm sure here somewhere. Uh, Dennis Ignatovich, Dave Aitken, Matt Bray, Elijah Kagan, Kostya Kanashev, Nicola Mometo, and Ewan McLean. Uh, we've been working on this this core together for many years. And uh, you know, basically everything I present would not be possible uh, without them. So what is Imandra? Uh, first and foremost, and happy 4th of July, fellow Americans. Uh, it is a new theorem prover. So uh, it is, as you'll see, uh, a theorem prover, also an interactive proof assistant, um, very much influenced by Boyer Moore, by the approach of uh, thumb and in Q thumb and ACL2. Uh, in the sense that our theorem prover is actually based on a mechanized formal semantics we've given to a programming language and formal models are efficiently executable programs. In our case, our logic is based on a, a higher order subset of OCaml. Um, so it's, it's uh, effectively a, a theorem prover in that sense, uh, but it's also um, integrates constraint solving. So one of the things that we realized very early uh, in our sort of principal application area, which is the analysis of financial algorithms. Uh, one of the things we realized was, you know, most of the time, the systems that people are using in Mondra to analyze are incorrect. Most of the time they have flaws. The typical use of a Mondra is to analyze a, a trading algorithm for compliance with complex regulations. And most of the time, you know, your first many iterations on the design of such an algorithm uh, will have subtle corner cases where it actually can violate a regulation. And so uh, we have a deep need uh, to synthesize counterexamples uh, and to do this in such a way that not only is you know, efficient uh, and effective from the counterexample synthesis standpoint, but also makes it very easy for the user to take those counterexamples and very quickly run them through their system, find where the issues are, um, really diagnose, you know, have, a, have a tool for, for um, you know, quick triage in a sense and, and diagnosis. Uh, and uh, one of the key things that, that we've done to make that possible is in a mantra, counterexamples are first class. So if you have a conjecture uh, and it's false and we synthesize a counterexample for it, well, that counterexample is actually reflected in a mantra's runtime uh, as an actual object you can compute with just like any other OCaml value. Um, and you can directly run your system through it, trace your system upon it, um, and so on. And that's been really critical for for you know, people at Goldman Sachs uh, who don't have a background in automated reasoning um, to apply a mantra. So yes, new proof assistant based on OCaml. Uh, and uh, as we uh, you know, are in the business world and, and love certain, in this case, descriptive buzzwords, a cloud native, auto, cloud native automated reasoning system. So what we mean there is you know, Mandra uh, is by default hosted in the cloud. Uh, if you make uh, an account and download in a Mandra client, um, you uh, can actually utilize our, what we call reasoning pods in the cloud to scale out reasoning on demand. Um, there's a whole cloud infrastructure uh, that we've developed to make this to, you know, scalable and, and um, cost effective. So that we're not using resources that we don't need, but they're available when we do need them. Okay, so what is the big idea? Uh, by the way, do you see this little zoom mute stop video thing? Or is that um, the, the, is, no? Okay, good. It looks pretty okay, good. It's over. It's over the slide, but 
I'm glad you don't say it. Okay, so yeah, it is OCaml plus automated reasoning. So you know, at the core, we have a programming language, and I'll I'll jump into demos pretty soon. Uh, this is a higher order, you know, polymorphic subset of OCaml with recursive functions. Um, we have taken this uh, again in the spirit of of Boyer Moore and ACL two. Uh, this subset of OCaml, we've given a mechanized formal semantics, and then we've built a reasoning engine effectively um, you know, around efficiently analyzing programs that are expressed in this fragment of OCaml. So uh, I mentioned first-class counterexamples. Uh, another one of the key aspects of Amandra is uh, we have to have robust you know, and, and effective automated induction. So we've taken many of the powerful ideas of Boyer and Moore, their so-called inductive waterfall, uh, that you know powers how uh, ACL2, for example, is able to synthesize uh, you know complex induction schemes uh, for conjectures that are containing instances of many different recursive functions that recurse in different ways. Uh, and we've lifted that to our setting, which is you know going in a sense from uh, first order untyped logic of ACL2 to our setting, which is a typed higher order logic uh, with polymorphism. And at the core of that uh, in a mantra is an uh, axiomatization of ordinals up to epsilon zero. So we have a definitional principle based on that, uh, that we discuss in the paper. Um, but the big idea is just the use of conservative extensions. So every time you define a function, we use ordinals under the hood to prove that actually adding that function, admitting it to the logic is conservative. And so that way we maintain relative consistency. Yeah. We have a number of techniques uh, are, that exploit um, and develop methods for nonlinear arithmetic that have been uh, important for analyzing financial algorithms. I won't really touch on those, but there's a lot of documentation online um, about you know, specifically proof automation that we've developed that's tailored to different kinds of uh, algorithm regulations and finance. But more and more, we're you know, applying these techniques to other areas like safe control for autonomous vehicles, geometrical movements, uh, there, there are a lot of, um, as you can imagine, uh, applications of, of good techniques for nonlinear reasoning outside of finance. Uh, there's a whole test suite generation framework that's built around Imandra, and uh, that is used by you know, firms like Goldman and Itivity and One Kronos and finance effectively um, to generate high coverage test suites, uh, give uh, effectively um, through forms of predicate abstraction to give uh, metrics to state spaces uh, so that we can talk rigorously about state space coverage metrics and synthesize test suites uh, that are meeting different uh, requirements. Um, yes, okay, so I'll try to quickly just show you some examples. So you can experiment with Imandra online. Uh, if you go to try.imandra.ai, let me just show you a few things. Um, so if you go to imandra.ai, can you, can you see this browser window? Okay. Hopefully, um, uh, so, yes. if, okay, perfect. So you can go to demo gallery and this will take you to, you know, different applications of a mantra sorted in different ways. Um, you can go to the docs uh, and let me just take you there and show you how you can get started. So basically, um, and you can also install uh, your own Imandra clients. And um, I'll show you in a minute, a command line interface that's very much like an OCaml top level, but we also have, um, Asynchronous, you know, verification in the style of Isabel Prover IDE uh, in VS Code. Uh, we have a VS Code plugin, um, and we also have Jupyter Notebooks. So let me just show you an example. If you go to the documentation, you can always click Try This on any, you know, one of our documentation pages, and this will launch in the browser an interactive Jupyter Notebook, so you can start to use Mandra. And yeah, you know, lots of little uh, Easter eggs here preloading the entire Herbert universe, right? Yes. Um, and let me just show you a few little things. So, uh, you know, at the core in a mantra, we have a programming language. So for example, I can just define an OCaml function. So let's say, you know, let f of x equal f of x or x plus one. Um, this is just a, you know, piece of code that I can run. But crucially, uh, whenever a function is admitted into a Mandra's logic, you know, we, we have a, a definition now that we can reason about. And so we can say things like verify and give it a lambda term, you know, verify for all x, f of x is never equal to 100. Okay, so a Mandra comes back very quickly and says, oh, of course, that is not true. Uh, that's refuted. And one thing to notice here is this module CX. 
So by default, whenever a counterexample is synthesized, it's synthesized in the runtime in a module called CX. So we actually get, in that case, all of the uh, quantified variables of our conjecture. We get concrete values for them in this actual you know, runtime OCaml value that we can compute with. So we can now see, oh, yes, that is a real counterexample. So this uh, uh, approach uh, continues once we have recursive functions. Um, so let me jump. Uh, I'll try to do just a very quick example in the Imadra top level. So for those familiar with languages like OCaml um, or standard ML, Haskell, Lisp, et cetera, Python, I mean, this is just a sort of top level. We can do the same sort of thing, define functions, run them, and so on. Um, but let me here do a little Boyer Moore style classic, and that is let's define a list reverse function. So we are going to, so we say let rec rev x match x with empty list. Empty list. Otherwise, if we have a cons, let's do the reverse of x is appended to singleton x. So behind the scenes, you know, this has been admitted into the logic. We can look at its definition. Effectively, we we had to prove it terminating. Yeah, we don't need to go into that. But uh, we now have, you know, the reverse function. Of course, we can compute with. It's a normal low camel. But we can reason about it. So, for example, we can say, you know, verify for all x, reverse of x is not equal to three. Great. And get out a counterexample. And again, you know, notice this counterexample has been reflected. Uh, so we can compute with it and directly see, okay, that is reverse. Uh, it's reverse. It has the property that we were seeking. So uh, that ability to effectively um, do this kind of constraint solving in a sense, SMT modulo recursive functions, uh, which may be higher order. So for example, you know, we might want to verify for all functions F and all values X, I mean, it's silly, but this dot map of X is not equal to one, two, three, let's say. And so this is a higher order goal. It's actually polymorphic. So we also had to synthesize a type so we see we, we synthesized here a counterexample over this higher order polymorphic goal. In the paper, we, we talk about this process, how we do specialization, lambda lifting, and so on, and monomorphization. Um, but uh, you know, we, we have these uh, values available in the runtime, the higher order you know, values, these are functions. So we can actually directly run, of course, cx.f mapped and c. OK, that really is what, what it says. Um, so now, because. I think we only have a few minutes. Let me show you uh, one of the other key features, which is uh, an integration of both bounded and unbounded verification. So by default um, in a mandra, uh, we don't try to do induction uh, unless a user asks. So the idea here is we want to always have you know, a complete method that is giving a user counterexamples if they exist or giving them a bounded result in a sense, a bounded model checking result. Uh, if, uh, you know, effectively a result holds. So we can say something like, you know, uh, verify fun X reverse of reverse of X is equal to X, classical result. And by default here, we're not asking a module to prove anything by induction. It's just going to up to a bound, do bounded model checking on this. So we see here, a module says, okay, this result is unknown, oops, uh, but it's verified up to a given bound. Now we can make that precise and actually say, you know what, we want this to be a proper bounded model checking result and we can say verify up to. So now instead we actually can get, you know, same mathematical result, but from a safety case or, you know, uh, assurance standpoint, we can get, okay, this has been verified uh, via bounded model checking, you know, in the presence of recursive functions up to a given bound. And there's different notions of bound here that you can use. But crucially, what, the way we typically work is, you know, uh, for a real system, this kind of bounded result, uh, we wouldn't be able to verify it at first. We would have counterexamples, and Mandra would synthesize those. We would ultimately fix our model, fix our conjectures, until finally we have something that we believe is true. And now we're going to ask Mandra to prove it by induction. And that is where now our inductive waterfall comes into play. So Auto tells Mandra use our automated induction techniques. And this now is, if anyone is familiar with the Boyer Moore world, this is, uh, you know, very much a, a sort of lifting of their ideas of an automated inductive waterfall to our setting. So we see Imadra realizes we, you know, need to do induction, synthesizes an appropriate induction scheme, 
We do destructor elimination, uh, cross fertilization, various techniques that that really began in the Boyer Moore world. Uh, and uh, ultimately, uh, we need to do subsequent induction. So uh, you have, uh, you know, very much, I'd say, tried and true, um, you know, industrial success with companies like AMD and others utilizing ACL2 in this way. And we built on those ideas to, to bring that to this tight higher order setting. Um, so behind this is a powerful rewriter. Um, let me just show you. Uh, powerful conditional rewriter, back chaining, forward chaining, um, you know, obviously uh, decision procedures in the spirit of S&T uh, that we're utilizing and lifting um, modulo effectively unrollings of the recursive functions. And I think I should conclude, uh, but basically the whole point of my talk is to just uh, try to encourage you to go uh, have a play with Imandra and uh, see if it can be useful for you. And, um, you know, we've got documentation online, we've got uh, easy different interfaces that you can install, and you can find a sort of plethora of applications and examples online. So here, this is an interface, for example, that we call a Mondra Markets that's used in finance. And all of this is powered by a Mondra under the hood for analyzing financial algorithms and actually replaying things like counterexamples in an interface that financial practitioners understand. Um, so, All right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, very interesting work. Thank you very um, much. So are there any uh, questions? So yeah, maybe I can start. So y you rely on um, SMT solvers as a backend or there, there are other tools? Um, Great, great question. Yeah, so we, we for ground, um, for various ground theories, we build on Z3. Um, mm -hmm. We have also other, uh, I mean, there, there are various, basically in a mantra, you have a sort of notion of tactics, um, different, in a sense, different tools you can apply. Uh, and uh, Z3, um, various restricted, let's say, instantiations of the Z3, um, uh, provides one powerful source of such tactics. We also have, for instance, a procedure called BLAST, which uh, Simon ha has done some beautiful work on, which is in the spirit of HBMC, if you're familiar with sure. that, built on a port mm -hmm. that Simon, well, Simon has worked on of Minisat. So that all just goes to SAT. Um, but basically, we're for the counterexample synthesis, we are you know, trying to build in uh, everything we can from SMT to pure SAT-based encodings, we're now uh, adding backends for ASP, um, things like Klingo, uh, and also mm -hmm. classical like constraint programming systems. Right. So now I'm, I'm super interested and impressed with MiniZinc. Um, so uh, yeah, from the counterexample synthesis standpoint, we're uh, we want sort of every tool uh, in the tool shed available and easily right. accessible, <laughs> and we have a plugin mechanism for that. Sounds like you have a, a lot of different kinds of constraints to deal with. Yes. Um, so yeah, a question from uh, Andre uh, Plotzer. So what is uh, Amandra used for real arithmetic? So we, I mean, a lot of things. We have our own uh, decision procedures that we've built uh, that build on um, some of the constructive real closure stuff that Leo Nomura and I did uh, originally in Z3. Um, we, we use NLSAT in Z3. Uh, we have our own, um, you know, basically, uh, custom decision procedures that we've written that are tailored around the kinds of constraints that appear in the financial regulations we deal with. And something else with Amandra, you know, very much in the sort of Boyer Moore approach. So, you know, in Amandra, the, I can just kind of, uh, sorry, I get out of full screen. Can you, are you, are you still seeing this? Oh, uh, yes. Okay, perfect. I think my, machine is, oh, uh oh, I may just be slowing down too much with the video. Um, perfect. So just to show you, so one of the big ideas, okay, we have this function rev, but we didn't actually save these results as a lemma. So one of the big ideas is uh, we want to drive users towards creating custom automation that is relevant for a problem domain. And this is, you know, I think very much in the spirit of how people would use a proof assistant like Isabel also, uh, 
uh, caulk and so on, but it, it's very much a part of the, the sort of ethos of how people use boyer more systems and very much in how we, we use a mandra. But basically, if we go back to this rev rev example, um, you know, let's say reverse reverse of x is equal to x, and we prove this by induction. So notice we're, we're doing multiple inductions and uh, that typically like that's great for finding a proof, but usually the way we use a mandra is we keep it on a tighter leash and we say, actually, so I'm gonna undo that. We say, I want you only to do a single induction at a time and I want you to lead me to limos, for example. So now I've told a mandra, you're only allowed to do a single induction. So it, it's going to ultimately fail uh, because it needs to do multiple inductions, but it gives us a checkpoint. And what we typically do is we look at a checkpoint like this and say, okay, what lemma is this suggesting? And we see, oh, okay, we've got a nest here of rev and a append, two recursive functions. So that suggests let's teach a mandra a rewrite rule about rev and append. So, you know, so I'll say here rev append x, y, reverse of x append y uh, is equal to reverse y append reverse x. And I'll tell a mandra, prove that and install it as a rewrite rule. But notice again, we, we have still restricted a mandra to only having a single induction. And so it reduces that now to this checkpoint, which if we quickly look at it, we just, oh, we need to teach a mandra associativity of a pin. So let's do that. Um, sorry. I just forget how to type during a talk. Um, equals, and we now do that and solve it as a rewrite rule. Great. Now we go back to rev append. Great. And we can go back to our original theorem, rev rev. And we see now this is done by a single induction using yeah. our rev append rewrite rule. So that process, you know, it's very often users are creating custom automation, which is really built around creating, you know, nice collections of rewrite rules that they're being right. driven to. She could, in theory, also automate. <laughs> but, um, yes, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, I think we should uh, probably uh, end. Um, there's one one other question from Marine. Maybe we could take you could take that uh, offline. Nice. Uh, but yeah, we are 15 minutes over. Hey, so. Marine. Hey, Audrey. <laughs> um,